In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the all new Menace Forum AI X1 Pro. And this is one of their most interesting PCs they've released in 2025 so far. It's coming in a bit bigger than some of their other minis, but it is packing a pretty powerful Ryzen APU. It's also got Wi Fi 7, a built in power supply. It supports up to 96 gigs of RAM, and you can add three M.2 SSDs here. And not to mention, we've got USB 4 here running at 40 gigs and an Oculink port around back for connecting a really fast eGPU if that's the route you want to go. Inside of the box, along with the X1 Pro, we get a vertical stand, and that's personally how I like to set this thing up, but it will sit horizontally on the desk. We've also got a mounting bracket, so you can mount this to the back of a monitor, on the wall, under a table. A couple extra M.2 heat sinks in case you want to add some more storage here, and our power cable. Like I mentioned, this has a built-in power supply so you don't have to worry about a brick, and once it's in that vertical stand, I think this is a really good looking mini PC. It also has a built-in fingerprint sensor and a dedicated co-pilot button. Up front, we've got our power switch, two full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. We also have USB 4, a 3.5mm audio jack, and that dedicated co-pilot button. Over here on this side, we've got a full-size SD card reader, and moving around back, USB 2.0 Type-A, Oculink, this is PCIe 4.0 X4, so connecting a really fast eGPU is simple with this setup. USB 4, and this does support alt mode and PD. So you can actually power the unit over USB 4, or you can use the included cable with that built-in power supply. Dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports, and of course our power cable input. Checking out the overall specs here, one of the big reasons I like the X1 Pro is because it's powered by the AMD Ryzen AI9 HX370. This is a powerful mobile APU based on Zen 5, 12 cores, 24 threads, base clock of 2 GHz with a max boost up to 5.1. We've also got that new 16 compute unit Radeon 890Mi GPU based on RDNA 3.5 and this will clock up to 2900 MHz. This will support up to 96 gigabytes of SODIMM DDR5 at 5600, and given that it's running that slower RAM as opposed to some others, iGPU performance may be affected, but we'll get into some testing and see exactly what this thing can do. It does have Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, three PCIe 4.0 M.2 SSD slots, a built-in 135 watt power supply, and this is running Windows 11 right out of the box. Getting in here to upgrade the storage and RAM is pretty simple, but there are a bunch of screws. I believe there's 12 in total. We'll just go ahead and remove the bottom. And this does have dual stereo speakers built in, like a lot of the other mini PCs on the market right now. Dual fan cooling system, one for the CPU, one for the RAM and storage. We'll go ahead and move the power supply out of the way. Again, built in 135 watt. We've got more than enough for this little unit. And once we get that out of the way, we can access the RAM. We've got dual channel SODIMM and three M.2 SSDs. And these SSD slots will support four terabyte drives. So in total, you can add 12 terabytes of storage to this thing. I've been using this thing for the past couple days. And personally, I like setting it up on the stand. I just love a vertical mini PC. Copilot button up front does come in handy if you're going to be using Copilot. And this thing is really snappy with that HX370. That APU is going to be able to handle most anything you can throw at it on an everyday basis. Web browsing, email checking, 4K video playback, you want to do some photo editing or even video editing. This thing has more than enough power and with that Radeon 890Mi GPU, you can also get some AAA gaming out of the way. But first things first here, I'm going to connect this to my game capture so we can get a better look at everything. And there's a few things that I wanted to go over. Jumping right in here to the BIOS. As you can see, it's using Minusform's visual BIOS. There's a couple things I want to check out, maybe change a few things. And it's really easy to navigate with a mouse and keyboard. From setup, under main, we've got all of the information about the PC. We'll go to advanced. AMD, CBS. Let's go to NBIO Common Options, GFX Configuration, and from here, the UMA Frame Buffer Size, otherwise known as VRAM, is set at 2 gigs out of the box. We're going to go up to 8. I've got a 64 gig system here, so we could go as high as 48, but we'll just do 8 gigs here. That'll be more than enough. We'll back up. Uh, one more thing, uh, SMU Common Options, System Configuration, 
set to auto. We've got a 15, 20, 28, 45. Let's just go with auto here. Smart shift control can be changed. So there is a chance that we could up the TDP if it's just not giving us enough. Pretty sure the cooling system in this thing can handle much more than 54 and it might be set a little higher. But other than that, I mean, we do have full fan adjustment. We can uh, set up a curve here. Basically, all of the main options we need in a regular BIOS are here and unlocked. So uh, actually, I need to save this right over here. We'll just save and exit. Get right into Windows. Getting right in here, I've been up and running for a while, rebooted a few times, got everything updated, and as you can see, we've got that Ryzen AI9 HX370, 12 cores, 24 threads, 64 gigs of DDR5 at 5600, and this is really going to kind of hold the iGPU back, because with a lot of the other mini PCs with this same CPU here, it's using much faster RAM, 7500, even up to 8000 megahertz. But since this system is using SODIMM RAM, it is upgradable and we can go up to 96 gigs. We've got 64 here. And of course, we've got that Radeon 890M iGPU, 16 compute units, and we went into the BIOS, dedicated 8 gigs of VRAM. From the BIOS, we left the power at auto, so I really wanted to see what this thing boosts up to. From CPU-Z, we'll stress this out. Sweet, so we're right there at 64, 65, it may come down to around 54 after a while, but let's go ahead and check exactly what we've got going on here. And we can do this pretty easily from hardware info. If we find our CPU and go down the list, so our sustained is 54 watts, and we've got a short boost up to 65, short boost up to 60. So yeah, even in auto mode, it's a 54 watt TDP across the board. Still plenty for the HX370. Obviously, one main thing they're pushing with this PC is that co-pilot button up front. So if we just tap it one time, it'll bring it right up for us. Now, it's up to you if you're going to use co-pilot or not. Personally, I don't use it. But there's a lot of stuff we can do here. We can generate images. We can get answers to questions. We can have it summarize the plot of a movie, plot of a book. It'll help us with our writing. It's really up to you. Again, it's not something that I personally use. And with newer Windows 11 systems, you can use this basically on anything. But we've got that dedicated button right up front there. It just makes it really easy to get to. So now that we know what we're working with, I did want to jump over to some benchmarks that I ran on this system. And the first one we have here is Geekbench 6. Single core, looking great here with a 2,994. Multi, 15,431. Falling right in line with other HX370 mini PCs running at a 54 watt TDP. Next thing I did was run Cinebench R24, and with the multi-core, we scored a 1,231, beating out a couple of the older Ryzen Threadrippers and the Ryzen 7 5800X, which are all desktop CPUs. And when it comes to single core, we're at 119. You can see this beat out the Apple M1 Max and the M1 Ultra, and everything else on the list here. With PC Mark 10, we scored a 7,689, looking really good here. And I also ran a storage test here. Remember, we've got PCIe 4.0 slots. So yeah, you can get some really fast storage in this unit also. And the final thing I ran here was 3 Mark Time Spy, just checking out the iGPU performance. And we scored a 3,197. Just to kind of give you an idea here, on another mini PC that I recently reviewed, running at 8,000 megahertz, we were over 4,000 with this score. So that SODEM DDR5 running at 5600 megahertz is kind of holding this iGPU back because when it comes down to it, it does rely on that system memory as VRAM. And theoretically, the faster it is, the better performance we can get out of the iGPU. Now we're going to be checking out some real world gameplay. And the first one we have is Spider-Man 2 1080 medium with FSR frame gen on. And people get a little upset about using frame gen, but we are working with an iGPU. Going into this with no frame gen, I'll tell you, this game will run at about 42 FPS with no frame gen, same settings we have here. With frame gen on, it makes it totally playable. A lot of people would be happy with this kind of performance. We're getting over 80 FPS on average. If this had a nice, beefy, dedicated GPU, we wouldn't need any frame gen, but we're still working with an iGPU, even though it's one of the more powerful iGPUs on the market. 
Forza Horizon 5, one I always have to test. We're at 1080 medium, no FSR. We don't have to worry about it with this because it's a very well optimized game. And on the Radeon 890M, even at lower wattages, this game runs absolutely amazingly. We're seeing an average of around 96 FPS. Marvel Rivals is a bit wonky on these iGPUs. It's still in early access, but I do hope to see better performance down the road. I do have to drop this down to 900p low. I also wanted to test out Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p, low, FSR, balanced. If this had faster RAM, we could actually go up to medium and see around the same frame rate here, but unfortunately we've got that slower RAM and it does kind of take a hit on that iGPU performance. Either way, at 1080 low with FSR set to balanced, we're seeing an average of around 63 FPS. And I did go through and test a few more games at 1080 medium. We've got that 54 watt TDP set here. Fallout 4 runs at full speed, 60 across the board. Fortnite, 76 FPS on average. Overwatch 2, 78. And Warframe is one of those games that runs really well on this, 98 FPS on average. The last thing I wanted to talk about here were CPU temps and total system power consumption. This is actually a pretty quiet mini PC, even in performance mode. It's got that phase change heat sink, and they claim under 80 degrees Celsius. This thing didn't even get close to 80 degrees with all of the testing that I did on it. Average temps while gaming were only 60 degrees Celsius, and the maximum this thing hit was 69 degrees Celsius while running Cinebench R24. And as for total system power consumption, this is measured from the wall using a kilowatt meter. At idle, it's only pulling 9 watts. Average gaming jumps up to 67 and the maximum I could get this to pull was 86 watts in total. But I will tell you, with some tuning from the BIOS and a third-party application, we can get the TDP on this to go up to around 80 watts, so if you're interested in seeing a video like that, let me know in the comments below. I know it's not recommended by the manufacturer, but since I've got this, I mean, we could go all out with it. Either way, I do think it's a really good-looking mini PC, and the way it's set up out of the box, it's a great performer. You can add a ton of storage to this thing, and if you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave links to Menace Forum's official website down below. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If there's anything else you want to see running on the X1 Pro, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.